everyone, welcome to Buckle Up Podcast. I'm Natalia Earl and I'm a certified business and life coach that loves talking to people. I'm fascinated by humans and how our brain works. What is it that makes a decision good or bad and how does that decision ultimately shape our path and destiny? Everyone loves to talk about success, but what about the flip side? How about adversity? Failure is such a big and often necessary part of life and it's simply unavoidable. So I invite you to join me on this inspiring, honest, unpolished interview show with breathtakingly real conversations that go deep on setbacks and hardships that are part of the puzzle that ultimately lead to growth, discovery of inner greatness, and what makes us resilient. Grab your helmet and buckle up, people. It's going to be a bumpy ride, but what a ride it will be. Today, we are back with Dr. John Jaquish, who has spent years researching and developing improved approaches to health. He's the inventor of the most effective bone density building medical technology, which is now partnered with Tony Robbins and OsteoStrong for rapid cleaning deployment. Dr. J is an inventor of X3, a technology that is proven to develop muscle much faster than conventional weightlifting, all with the lowest risk of joint injury. His methods are used in training the world's most elite athletes and associations, such as the entire Miami Heat organization, various NFL and NBA players, as well as Olympians. Dr. Jay Quish has been called the Tony Stark of the fitness industry by the Chicago Tribune, has been featured on many of the top health podcasts. He speaks at scientific conferences all over the world, is an editor of multiple medical journals, and is a research professor at Rushmore University. But again, the, my new diet direction is it's got to be something that people, even with poor willpower, can do. So like, I, you know, I don't necessarily encourage anybody to go zero carbohydrate. If they want to, I, they'll get results faster. Uh, but if they want to keep them low, great. And now, unequivocally, higher carbohydrate diets are associated with all kinds of chronic dysfunctions, whereas low carbohydrate diets are, uh, you know, that's that's where the longest lives are found. Now, there's some there's some conflicting data there, which is usually paid for by Nabisco, because like when oh, oh you know the the whole blue zone thing where people live to be like yes. 110 or something, yes. the whole thing is bullshit. <laughs> all of those areas, all those blue zones have one thing in common, no birth records. Everyone is lying. And why would they lie? Because they make this shit up. And then somebody from Nabisco flies in and says, Hey, we'll give you a hundred thousand dollars. If you say your favorite food is Triscuits and uh, you always needed to get your carbohydrates every day. That's why you live long. So it's just a marketing scam. Yeah, like these people didn't live any longer. In fact, the nutrition for the longest life, a huge meta-analysis, which pooled from 175 countries, came out two weeks ago. And it showed that uh, the people who eat majority animal protein live the longest. And the people who ate majority carbohydrates live the shortest. There was one weird thing. Raw vegans can actually live oddly a much longer period of time than you'd expect compared to the cooked beans, which so uh, there's something interesting there, but you know, like I, I think a lot of my, micronutrients are <sighs> the vitamins, you know, which is shit we don't need. Like, like um, take a guess, how many calories would you need if you couldn't have any supplements, just straight food? How many calories would you need to get to the minimums of, of uh, vitamins and minerals ascribed by the American Medical Association. Just take a guess. 1,500. 1,500 <laughs> calories. 27,000 calories per day is the answer. Wow. Right, right. So the vitamin recommendations are clearly written to sell vitamins because right. you can't, right. I mean, no one, no one can, is, can even possibly 
eat 27,000 calories a day. I think that's even beyond what a rhino can do. We're now 10 years into the, into the finding that low density lipoprotein, LDL, yes. the more of it you have, I mean, there's an, ex, an extreme upper limit, but I've never seen that in a person. Um, I think it's like 350 or something, which, you know, most people are like 175 and they're like, oh, I should be at like 80. Um, the people with a higher LDL live the longest. Really? Mine was at 250. <laughs> it's <laughs> exactly the odds. So yeah, you're going to live longer. Don't try okay. and lower your cholesterol. Okay. Cholesterol is what like multiple hormones are made out of. Mm. So like, if you lower that, then how's your body going to make estrogen? How's your body going to make testosterone? Women do have a little bit of testosterone, but it's very important. Um, yeah. Like what, why would you do that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause they want to prescribe so, a pill, push it on you. Yeah. The, the stat, the logic of statins it's, it's, I mean, statins never really had great research behind them. And now we know why, because lowering your cholesterol is actually not that good for you a long time ago well not that long ago maybe 10 years where they showed that meat causes uh colon cancer i'm sure you saw this study because yes. it was all over the world. meat causes colon cancer well when you read the study they weren't testing meat at all it was nitrate meat artificial nitrate meat like a gas station hot dog they found a group of people a thousand people who would eat a gas station hot dog every single day for 40 years. Yes. Now, if you ate a gas station hot dog every single day for 40 years, uh, are you a Dave Asprey fan? Are you, are, you, are you looking at different aspects of your health and how to optimize them? No, if you're eating a gas station hot dog, you probably expect to be, you know, maybe shot in some, you know, biker quarrel later that day. Like, you know, I mean, these are these are not people who are doing anything for health and probably have very little foresight that they're even going to be alive in the short term future. So like and they didn't control for cigarette smoking. They didn't control for alcohol consumption. They didn't control for anything. They just found a thousand people who had eaten a gas station hot dog every day for 40 years. And then that was their sample. Like talk about sample bias. Yeah, like I mean, they rigged the study by finding the people who care the least about their health, borderline suicidal. Wow. So, anyway, that's that's the, the the landscape of the research. So, like when somebody says, you know, do you cherry pick your studies? No, I make you aware of studies that you didn't know about. I don't need to make you aware of studies that where somebody paid by Nabisco says eating you know, highly processed, refined wheat products is a good health choice. Yes. Like, first of all, we all know that's not true, right. um, except for the people who like to lie to themselves. Um, yeah, they, I, a new, new term I'm working on, I want this to catch on, I call it achieved ignorance. It's like, you know, <laughs> and, and you see this in politics where somebody like just, you know, wants it one way, even if that one way makes absolutely no sense. No sense. You know, everybody needs... But a lot of time, medical community, you know, if your physician graduated in the 1970s, while he has or she has continuing education requirements, usually that those requirements are met by conferences thrown by pharmaceutical companies. So they'll go and learn about like an allergy medication and hear an hour lecture and then it's a you know, everything's paid for for your family vacation. And then you get to be there for two weeks and the pharmaceutical company pays for this. Right. So you want to call that corrupt? Eh, I don't call it honest. Corrupt may be a little strong of a word. And I don't think the physicians are doing anything wrong other than taking a free vacation. But it's not continuing education. That's not education. That's indoctrination of you know, whatever the company wants you to believe. In America. Same in England. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, exactly the same in England. Yeah, or, or now they have private hospitals in England, which- Oh, you pay cash. Staggering amount of money, right? You exactly. Just pay cash. 
Exactly. And, and I actually, it's funny you bring that up. I really enjoy working with the NHS. That's the, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's the British uh, sort of socialized medicine. Um, they got rid of a lot of bureaucracy. Like, as I did a study with them and they were like better than most US universities. And that's a country's medical system. I was shocked. But again, it's like, you, you know, going to a hospital visit there is like going to the DMV. Like no matter what, you're in the wrong line. And no matter what form you filled out, it's the wrong one. <laughs> And nobody's willing to help you find out what the right form is because they don't care. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, I'm dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone, is, everyone here is dying. So, you know, sorry. Fine. Go, so go, go get in that line over there because I'm too lazy to look up the answer to your question. Yeah. You know, so that's, true. well, I mean, that's when government runs anything because it's a bureaucracy. You can't track who's a good employee, who's a bad employee because that takes effort and money and they're not willing to spend that. So they might as well just be mediocre. hundred percent. Look, look at our department, any state, any state in the union, the department of motor vehicles is like, you know, just an eye roll conversation with just about anybody. Mm -hmm. I know people that work for the department of motor vehicles and roll their eyes at their own organization because they're like, yeah, we get nothing done. Yeah. Really funny though. In California, um, the DMV was basically replaced for a couple months during COVID by a website, which worked better than the actual DMV. <laughs> I and, believe you know, it. I, I've said that for years, like literally all you people could go away and you'd be replaced by a single website. Yes, 100%. Yeah. And it would be better. It would be <laughs> Faster way better. Faster service, yep. <laughs> right, and so people started saying, they're like, yeah, this new website, it's like you never have to go to the DMV. It's perfect. And they can do everything except for the in-car driving test, which by the way, could be outsourced, video recorded, submitted, and then run through an algorithm and make sure that people did the you know, required things. That could also be done on the website. So, and then you just pay a third party to administer the test. Um, not that I've been thinking about this or anything, but <laughs> it, it, it's like, you know, like this entire bureaucracy is for nothing. 100%. Um, yeah.